the whole concept of learning music at a young age, for me, is not just an act of preparing you to be a performer. It's not so much something that is just a plat an, art an art form, but it is a platform. It's a platform for creative thinking, for problem solving, for creating empathy. So for me, it's a foundational thing, rather than something that you add later, rather than it being a luxury. There is a number of skill sets that I believe are unique to musicians that are very well cultivated among musicians, like the ability to collaborate, the ability to empathize and read an audience, to improvise, to present a concept, uh, to take different ideas and mix them up and come up with something totally new, to continuously reinvent themselves. And these are mindsets that are applicable way beyond just being a performer. So my view is that music is a, a foundational uh, skill, knowledge, mindset, more, the, more so than a, a luxury that you teach only if you have time and money to make it happen. Clearly, and, and Berkeley's already doing this through music therapy, uh, we know that music has the ability to alleviate pain, help people overcome trauma, um, help people cope with extreme stress. And there's a number of studies uh, that have been performed that prove this point. So just from a music therapy standpoint, it's one thing. The other thing that I believe is really unique to music is the fact that it creates empathy. It helps you understand people, and people understand music. It's maybe the most honest way of communication between people. Um, and then thirdly, it is, as I mentioned, a set of mindsets that can be cultivated, that can help tremendously later on in life in terms of envisioning possibilities and career outcomes and journeys. I believe that it directly um, promotes uh, entrepreneurialism and, and thinking more creatively, more innovatively, more, uh, more agile, uh, be a lot more open to new ideas and new stimuli. So in terms of the question, I believe that it touches in different ways and it's more most fundamental way. Music has the ability to heal and to make us um, to help us overcome really stressful, really traumatic situations, uh, whether it's through experiences in, in war or others. But then in its more aspirational elements, it's a platform, it's a tool, it's a mindset that prepares us, I think, for, for life and for the fact that life is, is uh, a construct of constant change. Society is changing. The needs of people are changing. The stress that people are encountering and uh, the need for people to adjust and adapt to the rapid changes that new technologies are bringing about is tremendous. Um, I'll take an example of artificial intelligence uh, that it's expected that uh, self-driving cars and robots will replace a, a, a good number of, of jobs. In some estimates, as many as 40% of all jobs that exist today will not exist within 15 years from now because it will be automated. Um, so if you are in the space of being a social entrepreneur, you have no option but to continuously think of innovative ways to approach problems. Um, nothing is constant. The solutions of yesterday don't necessarily work today. The solutions of today won't necessarily work tomorrow. So uh, inhabiting a mindset and uh, embodying this concept that nothing is ever constant, that things are always changing, and being able to adapt, adjust, course correct, continuously uh, re regenerate, be re reborn as an organization, as an individual, is important. If we don't learn how to be resourceful, 
And as social entrepreneurs, if we don't help our society and our people cope with these changes by arming them with the tools they need, this starts uh, at a young age, right? I mean, sure, you can learn as you get older. Of course, if we stop learning, we die. But these are the young people who will inherit this society and they're the young people who in many ways will be coping with a lot of the changes that this future is bringing that I talked about. Some of them will actually be creating those changes, that's what we're hoping for, creating these solutions, finding these the answers. So imbuing them with this mindset very young is absolutely critical. There's a lot of studies that show the big impact that music has from a uh, neurological standpoint in your brain formation um, that starts at a very young age, between the ages of three, four, all the way to about seven. Learning music at a young age arms you uh, with a lifelong ability to learn and take in new concepts. And that actually is not an issue of exposure, it's an issue of the way that your brain is constructed because you've learned music at a young age. It also makes you much more susceptible to learning new languages. I mean, if you learn new languages and you're able to speak more than one language like you do, you're also able to empathize with different people and understand different people because language is ultimately an expression mm -hmm. of culture. Yeah. Uh, so for me, the younger, the younger that uh, the students are, we get exposed to music and to this messaging is critical and that's what Matuta is doing. And that's what Berkeley is ultimately interested in. I don't think, again, there's something about our ability to process music, which, by the way, recently MIT scientists found that there is a separate part of our brain that processes music from the part of our brain that processes language. So developing that part enables us to be open to so many more, more things. Uh, and I think this is the admirable work that the Paduta Foundation is is doing and reaching deep into the strata of society. I don't, I don't believe that music exclusively belongs to any group of people. It belongs to all of us as humans. It's, it's the most fundamental thing that we share as humans. We don't share a common language. We don't share many things. We don't share a common environment, but we do share music.